Hello doll friends, this is Michael Canadas with the Grovian Doll Museum and Carmel Doll Shop. We are on our second installment of Kessner, King of Doll Makers. So I want to tell you a little bit about the early years of Herr Kessner. Uh, as a young man, he made his first move in business uh, supplying buttons to Napoleon's army. So that gave him a really a heads up in the world of of commerce and manufacturing. Uh, also got him a lot of great connections with suppliers. Uh, ultimately, we don't know how or why he got into the doll business. Now, we're in about the year 1820, could be a little earlier, but about 1820 that dolls started to be manufactured. Now, I'd like you to think about it for a second. In 1820, what was available on the market? What was available on the market for dolls would be something you made at home, such as a, cl a cloth doll stuffed piece, a wooden doll, or a wax doll. There wasn't a whole a lot of variety of materials available. For export, which is really where the money was, because think about where the Kessner company was located, it was in a very remote uh, part of Germany, and uh, of course it wasn't necessarily wasn't unified Germany at that point, but it was very remote. So you had to get your things to market and it cost money to move things. So he was at the right place at the right time when people were experimenting with new materials and a material that we would call paper mache. It's really actually a composition of sorts. So the first dolls that he made were out of in quotes, paper mache. Lightweight, easy to transport, easy to export. Um, their their uh, factory was not that far. Um, I mean, to us, it doesn't seem that far. Not that far to Nuremberg, where Nuremberg was a center of toy distribution in the 19th century, still is today with the, the Nuremberg Toy Fair. So the first piece we're gonna look at um, I have these two ladies here for a reason. Now, one of the things I want to teach you today, restoration and conservation. Okay, so if we were restoring the bodies, um, that would mean that we were making a new body and putting it on it, and we've restored it. Conservation is conserving the body that is already there. So both of these ladies are in our collection and they are right now going through conservation. That's why they're having the out-of-body experiences. So we're right here about 1820 and we're here about 1910. But there is a unifying material in both of them. And I want to point out, when most people think of Kessner dolls today, they think of children, child dolls and baby dolls. They had a long, long history of lady dolls and actually male dolls. So the unifying material that's important to point out is known as the plaster paint. So look at that. And then look at this. So this is basically the identical material. The only difference is this might have a little bit more of um, additives to make it a little bit stronger. If you'll note, if I'm going to hold it sideways, uh, it's basically paper thin. So this is a very delicate material. I think we could assume that these were made by the thousands in 1820, but there are very few that have actually survived today. Um, there is a nice variety of uh, Kessner paper machés out on the market today. I mean, you could, you could find them, but as they get older, there's less and less. So how do we know the age? One, one thing we can go by is the hairstyle. So this is kind of, um, um, I would call her a middle-class lady because the braid actually creates the halo effect or a tiara effect. 
and I've seen the same head with an even taller uh, braid wrapped around it. And then you can see in the back, if they like, this is actually a molded comb. And combs were very stylish in the, the, the early part of the uh, 19th century. Um, you know, I don't know why it seems that they, they didn't paint those in. You'd think they would paint them gold or uh, tortoiseshell color. But what is amazing is she still has her original side curls after all these years. And that is actually human hair, never touched with any dyes or any, anything like that. Um, now, the reason that I know that, that this is a Kessner is uh, the Kessner Company did some of the earliest trade catalogs so that, okay, so if you were in London or New York City and you were a buyer, you could order through their catalogs and their, their catalogs are incredible works of art. So here's the head of about 1820 and here is a little donor body for us to look at and this is a body that was used for a good 35 or 40 years. It's a leather body with uh, wooden limbs. Um, you can see that there are some people that believe that the color of the paper, this is paper, the paper bands dictate uh, the size of the doll. I do not believe that. I just think that they, um, you know, use what a different colored paper um, it, there's the possibility that it could be true, but that would mean us doing a lot of work and um, getting all the dolls of various sizes, you know, to, to compare, to, to get some analysis. And you might end up ruining original clothes because if this were dressed, you wouldn't see a dad. Now I want to note here that something that you don't see every day, um, this uh, the feet are wood, the legs are wood. Uh, you, almost always the shoes are painted various colors, blue, uh, red, gold in this case. But this one, someone, someone had actually put shoes over it, which is really kind of amazing. So in a lot of ways, this um, body style that Kessner developed and then it was copied by many other companies um, was the ideal, what we would call empire body of the time. Very long and willowy, drapey, um, but it would work for the next era. So I'm gonna move these ladies aside and we're gonna get wild. We are gonna get wild. So, well maybe we won't get so wild. Now you could almost say, oh my God, the Kessner Company was uh, working in the 18th century because here is a Kessner doll. It's um, documented in their, again in their catalogs. It is known as the Rococo Lady. And so in 1820, just like today, people were interested in historic pieces. And this is a costume doll. Just like I have a, I think it's fun sometimes to do a 19th century doll up as Marie Antoinette. They were already doing that. Um, except, you know, they were a little closer to the Rococo era than we are. But note here they did paint the comb and it's a triumph of, of beautiful painting. The uh, choker on her neck is um, painted on also. And if you ever run across, if you're ever lucky enough to run across one of these, if there's a hole in the head, that's where you know you put the, um, the plume. But it's basically the, the same body as this one. It's just changed with padding and the costuming. So this is, a, again, a, a, a very early doll, um, but it really is stylistically very much like a, a Rococo lady. Um, I think that Kessner was probably one of the first to recognize good molds, good sculptures. In doll making, the most important person 
actually is the mold maker. And a lot of these molds, as at later on, actually went from being a paper mache's to china heads, but we'll get to that later. So that was the Rococo lady. Now, oops, we're gonna get wild. So this is known as an Apollo's knot. And it's a, an incredible hairstyle. Um, you really can't do this today with your own hair, and they didn't do it in the day with theirs. That, that was achieved by a lot of hair pieces and a lot of sugar water and maybe bear grease and all kinds of things. I mean, as long as you had something to pin it to, you could achieve this hairstyle. Um, again, this was a, a doll that was copied by many other makers, but I believe that the Kessner Company was the first to um, uh, utilize it. Now, one way that I've, I've, I've checked on this, because this doll went, even though she looks very tender, we did have to do a little bit of work on her uh, to have her presentable, same materials. So I think it's important to actually think about what kind of material uh, your doll is. Now, and, and we, we are, we are 15, 15 years from this one to this one. So she is younger and she is older. Um, one thing that is unique about this doll is it's not on a Kessner body. This one happens to be a one of a kind and I think that in the 1830s, they popped it off its body because they wanted to make it a ballerina with movement. And so this is a one-off. There is not another one like it. And if you think about it, this does not have movement. This does. So, you know, in collecting, there's always variations. Um, you know, these are fun to collect, I should point out that I've seen them six, six inches, and I've seen one that was 38 inches, which um, that it survived with that kind of body um, at the, that huge size is amazing. Um, the small ones were created, the little ones were created for dollhouses. And we will get into that at an, in another session, but a lot of Kessner dolls right now live in their original dollhouses. So here we can just have a look at this beautiful piece before we go. And they are so much fun to collect. So anyways, doll friends, we will be back uh, uh, very soon with another session. Bye-bye. Remember to follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and remember to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.